Good question. Um, how much sacrifice should you give uh, for your community? Don't ever calculate what you give. Because if you calculate what you give, the devil behind you and me will say, Haram! Your wife wants it, your mother wants it, your house wants it, your children wants it. You need it. That's why one of the metaphors of give with your right hand, what the left hand does not understand, and this is actually to stop the devil seeing what you take from your pocket. Just give. And learn the art of giving. And you are giving to the giver. You are giving to the giver. You see, you can understand. You go to the king. You go to the king, I'll give you five pounds. Because you have this project. The king might say, okay, I promote you for a job with 2,000 pounds extra. And this is the king or the queen. How about Allah? Who at the beginning gave you everything. Your life, your living, your health, your wealth, everything. And you tell Allah, I give you back. Will you be more generous than Allah? No, never. But don't count. Don't count. I have a friend of mine who took a mortgage. The, nor the, the, the normal mortgage, another one took an Islamic mortgage. And they had a discussion between one of them. The one who took the uh, uh, Islamic mortgage was not counting anything. It's a standing order every month and they forget about the whole thing. It's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. The other one changed it from the normal mortgage or the bank mortgage into a Islamic mortgage. And they found the difference, 50 pounds a month or 70 pounds a month. And they came back to discuss with this man. Yeah, but actually it's 70, 80, 100 pounds a month. The other man told him, I don't know how much I pay. I just signed an agreement. And that's a forgettable. So the other man took it from the Islamic mortgage back to the bank mortgage. And they still pay it. And this one pays his mortgage. If you keep calculating, the one who stops you is the one who is in front of you now. He's, he's here. Are you here? Yes, he's here. And with him, jumping. Now he's jumping from here to here to here to here. And he wants to jump inside me to chew me and spit me out. Once you start calculating, once you start calculating, that means that he will think that you have this element of doubt. One in a thousand. Or one in a hundred thousand. Or one in a million. He's very patient. The devil is extremely patient. He might be with us for 20, 30, 50 years to try to let us to do one sin. I give you two examples. One example. You know the, 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 the monk who, who committed adultery with the girl? You know the story. No? You know the story? All of you? There was, at the time of the war, of the no crusade or something like this, in the good old days, a, a, a fighter left his beautiful daughter behind and he went to the monk on the mountain and told him, please look after my daughter. The monk was in his cell, uh, worshipping, six months or whatever it is, he forgot about the girl. Then he said, okay, let us go down. The devil went to him. To, even not knock the door, just from a distance, said, hi, yani, this is the door, and from a distance, are you there? She's there, will come from behind the door, said, yes, I'm there. Are you okay? She said, I'm okay. Then he came back. Then he came back to him after a week or five weeks or whatever, they told him, why don't you knock the door? And listen to her voice. She might be scared. He did. He listened to her voice from behind the door. Then the voice started to penetrate his heart. Then he came back to his cell. After a month or a week or two, tell what is, then we came back to her. She said, Go, she might need something to be to clean her house or whatever. I told them, Daughter, do you need anything? She said, No, thank you. She said, Can I come in and see if you need anything? When you looked at her, she was so beautiful and attractive and vulnerable. So he committed zina with her. Okay? See, it took him a year. To open the door. And after that, he wanted to, to bury his, his sin. He killed the girl, then he killed his son or his daughter, or whatever it is, and buried both of them. The father came after a year or two 
And they went to him and said, where is my daughter? She died. Okay? Then he went to the, de to, to the man, the devil went to the man in a dream. Tell him, this man, the monk, killed your daughter and buried her in this place. Go and see it. So the father woke up next morning and found that his daughter was buried in this place and covered with his family. This was on the bad side. On the good side, see the monk changed 24-7 in his last days. He was 70 or 80 years. I think, you know, Abdul Fattah Mall, the one with the uh, Nahda, Tunis. He was a young man, younger than all of you, 16 or 17, on the, on the TV, on, on, on the Facebook. <laughs> and they said, for days, I was trying to attract one man to come to the mosque. Nobody came to me. It was raining, very difficult, very cold, and I found somebody walking like this. I said, man, you to come with me to the mosque? He said, yes. He took him by the hand. He did not realize how he smelled. And he went to his hand. The mosque was very small, no proper ventilation. By the time he put his feet in the mosque, all the people who are praying got the shoes, throwing it, and Al-Fatah, and the one man. He said, what's going on? Sheikh, Sheikh, so and so, help me. The Imam knew Al-Fatah. He said, leave him, he's my son. The people who pray in the mosque, you know what he said? He is bringing somebody, he's, he's, he's drunken to the mosque. He said, oh, Al-Fatah, my son, why you bring this man here? They wanted the man to get out. The man said, no, I'm going to pray whether you like it or not. Yeah, in it. Go, 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 go. Have a shower, come next day. No way. No way. I'm going to leave the mosque. Then actually, Maghrib Adan came. And they want to pray. They don't know what to do with this man. They put him at this far right. They didn't even leave him. They put him at this far right and they make a distance of nearly two meters between him and the man. And uh, everybody prayed and the man was here and the next man with him was there. And after they finished marriage, he was still making sujood. Abu Fattah said, okay, man, he does not know that we have finished the prayer. He left him for a minute or two or three minutes, then he said, okay, let me go and wake him up. He was trying to wake him up like this. The man fell down, he was dead. And Abu Fattah was crying to the Imam. And the Imam was crying to Abu Fattah. The Imam was telling him, I have been praying in the mosque for Allah to get me on this condition, to accept me. And this drunken man came for the first time to pray. Allah accepted him. Next to you. You see? You look at this. Two conditions. When you look at the two conditions, you have to look at the last minutes of our life. And ask Allah to protect us. And this last time. Because everything could be changed to the first of over a minute, and it's done. Thank you.